Okay, so we're going to talk about um, population ecology a little bit here. Um, so when we're studying organisms, one of the questions is, well, how do they know that there's 300 polar bears left out there? Or how do they know that there's, you know, this many plants left or whatever? So that's kind of what we're going to touch on in this one. Um, so what people don't realize is you don't just go out there and count a bunch of bears or whatever it is. You need to think about all of the aspects with that organism. So the fact that they're dealing with a varied environment is huge, right? Um, what temperature do they prefer? What kind of water needs do they have? Do they prefer sunlight or shade? Do they have a preference for soil types? Those are going to be huge things that they have to deal with, and that's going to help you narrow down where you're even going to find them and that type of stuff. Um, so individuals are going to respond to changes in the environment in a couple of different ways physiologically, morphologically, and behaviorally. So physiological stuff is going to be internal stuff. And actually, you did this when, if you moved here from sea level. Um, what is a significant fact about people that live up here a mile high compared to people at sea level is the fact that we have more red blood cells, right? So we have a different red blood cell count living up at this altitude. So that's a physiological response we made to the fact that there's less oxygen here and we need to get more oxygen to our tissues, right? Um, so that's going to be physiological. Morphological would be an external change in response to a change in the environment. Let's say it's getting really hot. What's a dog going to do or a bear or a deer? They're going to shed, right? So shedding their fur, shedding antlers, all of those are going to be morphological changes, exterior changes they're going to make. And then you've got behavioral changes. So what do bears do when it gets cold in the winter? They hibernate. That's a behavioral response. Um, if you think about penguins, when it gets really cold, they huddle together. That's going to be another behavioral response. So those are going to be the three ways that something can respond to a change in the environment. Okay. So let's talk about a population. A population is not going to be an entire species, but it's a little group of an entire species. So um, if we were talking about all of us in the classroom, we would be a population of humans, right? We're not all the humans on Earth, but we're a population of one species that's in that room. Um, so what's interesting, if you think about it, is if you have a population, everybody is going to be relying on the same resources and are going to be dealing with a lot of the same environmental challenges. Okay, so let's say that we wanted to go and measure a population and figure out how many there are out there. There's going to be two things that we're going to need to look at, density and dispersion, okay? Density is going to be how many individuals per unit of area. So we have 300 elephants per acre, that's density. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. The most common way is gonna be mark and recapture. So I'm pretty sure you can guess how mark and recapture works, right? So you're going to mark a bunch of individuals when you catch them. You're going to release them out. Then you're going to set traps again, and you're going to see how many with that mark you recaptured, right? That's basically it. And then you can put it into this um, little um, uh, formula right here. So the number that you marked in that first catch times the total number in the second catch divided by the number recaptured in the second catch. So that's kind of how you can look at that. Um, now, let's talk about marking things. You gotta be careful, right? Um, I did an experiment in undergrad where we were marking these things called ghost crabs because they look exactly like the sand and we put big red X's on them. And when we did our recapture, we didn't catch any. Any guesses why? Yeah, we totally ruined their cover. It was awful. So the predators were like, there they are, and ate them. Um, so you got to think about that. Um, if you're going to use bands like they do on birds, you got to make sure those are light enough so you're not going to affect their flight. Um, when we were tagging sea turtles in Costa Rica, we had to make sure that we used tags that first weren't going to fall off while they swam and also weren't going to corrode from all that salt water, right? Who cares if there's some algae on it? You can always wipe that off. All right, so that's going to be the mark and recapture method. Um, in class, I'm going to talk to you about another method that I did for my master's that um, I couldn't do mark and recapture, so I had to do something else. The next thing that you need to take into account is going to be dispersion patterns. So um, basically the spacing between individuals. Um, there's three types. You have clumped, uniform, and random. 
And these three are going to be due to some type of attraction or repulsion or lack of either between them. So I'm going to show you pictures for this because I think that's going to be a little bit better. So here you can see a clumped distribution. So um, all these C stars right here are clumped, right? Um, so you can see a diagram would look like this where there's a lot of space in between them and then you find them in these clumps. Now, why would they do that? One could be social. Maybe they want to hang out together like herds tend to do because of social issues or reasons, I should say. Um, another reason could be resources. Maybe there's a lot of food right there or a lot of water or whatever it is. Um, now, the reason I bring this up is because if you were going to go and do a count on elephants, let's say, and you figured out that they are in Africa, they're not in Colorado, that would be a good starting point. And let's say you did your study sites like here and here. Um, probably going to cause some issues because you'd be like, well, there's no elephants left. I don't know what's happening. Um, and that's because you didn't think about their distribution, right? Their, um, how they're dispersed. Okay, so that's clumping. Then the next one, sorry, <laughs> is uniform. Um, so you can see here there's like a uniform amount of space between each individual. Birds tend to do this, especially penguins. And as you can see, that's most likely due to territoriality. So they know if I get any closer, this guy's going to kick my butt and start to fight with me, right? So they stay that perfect amount of space away, and that way they aren't going to fight with one another. So that's going to be due to some sort of repulsion between individuals, territoriality, that type of stuff. And then finally, you have random, and random is where there is absolutely no pattern whatsoever. It's just kind of wherever they are, they are. Maybe they could be uniform in some parts. Maybe they could be clumped. Who knows, right? But it's just kind of random wherever the seeds fell or wherever they fall, they fall. Okay? So those are going to be all of the different um, dispersion patterns that we have. Now, in the next video, we're going to start talking about demographics.